To the bottom left of the map, we have our Terran player. He is 0-3 in this group today. He won. A, he lost against every single Zerg player. Now he is up against one Protoss. Can he take the game? It is, of course. CJ into Sipyong. Very respectful of Grubby in chat. In fact, uh, Tiny thinks he's a good player, and also said, "Please be gentle." <laughs> Pyong can't advance anymore, he is in code A, that's a fact, this game is irrelevant to him. His opponent starts cross map to the top right, it is the foreigner in this group, we have in blue, a player from the Netherlands. Groovy. Groovy Grubby. Yep, never be forgotten. And he's still got that wild card shot. He needs to win it though. He absolutely must win this game if he wants it. Yep. If he loses here, then he is in code A. Byung will go for a command center first uh, against the player from the Netherlands and see what Grubby has in store. I'll be obviously playing this a little bit more safely. He has the probe walking across the map to scout. He's also going gateway first and taking his gas. For Grubby, the invitation of the up and downs was a great chance and opportunity to play in uh, the not only in the GSL but also in Korea. And he will stay here for another few months. Will practice with the FXO team, stay at the team house, and make the best of it of his day. He's going to a few tournaments uh, during that time. Uh, one of the tournaments that he's going to attend is uh, the IEM in Poland, where he's going to be, and then he's going uh, to fly back to Korea. Right now, though, he's focusing uh, on the up and downs. He was in Korea for roughly a week now, maybe 10 days, trying to prepare as much as possible. It was pretty difficult. was a bit jet-lagged for the first two days and then tried to get as much practice as possible. But if you have to uh, prepare against this many opponents, it's always a little bit tough. For him, this is just a first test, and uh, he had to realize in the first three games that his opponents were just a tiny little bit stronger. And he is 0-3 in the group, so a win would be important not only for the group situation that we have today, but also for his confidence. He cancelled the second gas after he saw the CC first. Obviously didn't see the command center directly, but seeing those two barracks walling off at the top uh, tipped him off. So he wants to get his next stuff faster. You know, I thought for a moment there we might see him try to do some uh, some sort of tricky play, perhaps a blink stalker play uh, off of one base after seeing the CC first when he had the double gas, but he had the reaction time to jump back to his base, cancel that second assimilator, and get ready for a, a later macro game. This is one of those maps where he said he would probably try to take it um, to be a little bit more flexible about it. One of the options that he has, one of the strategies that he trained is just going for a full gateway attack and going uh, for a 7 gate. But now we have Yong actually with uh, two additional barracks going into the heavy barracks play here. Yep. Not the third one, not going to be doing the, the card build <laughs> of this matchup. But uh, there are a few players who figured out you could do five barracks, but Frost players figured out how to deal with that. Four barracks is much more reasonable, especially on this map because you can the Hydra Marines around the side, and usually at the timing that it works out with four barracks instead of five, you hit with a, a few Marines that go out just as the Prost is moving out to make his poke. And Byung actually is heading around the left side of the map, so really, really tricky because yeah. normally, uh, you know, on cross positions, even though it's cross, you would normally see someone go to the bottom and then go around, but around the top is even less expected, I would say, by Grubby. Keen style. Yeah, very, very keen. Trying to sneak them in and still no gas for Byung. He hasn't, doesn't have a single refinery at this point. He's just going for Marines, Marines, and SCVs. Grubby has to prepare here. He's going into Robo. And he misses the Marines completely, at least with the first Stalker. The second one is going to find them. Yep. He oh no. Oh my god. It. This is very unlucky, and here come the Marines, five of them. Grubby is so unlucky today. Everything is just going wrong for him in this entire up and down situation. He moves the Stalker away like two seconds before he would have at least spotted the Marines. So this is so unfortunate for him. A very unlucky position here. He needs to make sure that those Stalkers don't die. He has the Michael to pull it off. There are five Marines and now he's going straight with those two Stalkers against them. He has the vision on the high ground now thanks to the Observer and moves also the probes in. Saves the Stalker. Well done. But still. Yeah, he's, he finds himself slightly behind now. I mean he was already behind Builder Wise in the beginning with the uh, CC first. Now Young, Young actually have to admit was a little bit slow on his gas and his CC. He had a lot of resources banked up. He was so worried about microing that he missed his time for CC a little bit. So that's something that will help Grubby slightly going forward here. 
In the last attack, Bjorn killed three Harvesters, and he also eliminated mining time exactly. for Grubby. Exactly. That's even more important than the, the Harvesters themselves, I feel, for how long Grubby had to be off the mineral line. He moves across the map once again, yeah. and Grubby just misses I the know, Marines. I know, yeah, this is actually could have been great for Grubby. If he had seen those, he could have killed so many of them. Now, he, if he moves forward towards that watchtower, he's going to be in trouble, but he okay. should be okay here. Yeah, this time he sees them, he knows now what's coming. Here comes the forward scan by Bjorn Grubby with a micro trying to save the stalker. The first one is dead, we have one sentry. Here comes the guardian shield, Bjorn is moving in another round of warmings for Grubby. He's trying to fight this, moving back with a damaged stalker, trying to save as many of his units as possible. Doing a great job with this micro here, yeah, the Grubby. marines dying. Grubby takes his supply leader here, his micro much better than Bjorn's in that fight, taking a huge, a huge uh, chunk of those Marines down for free. Uh, a lot of claps from the crowd on that one, that was excellent micro. That was well done, and now the transition into the Robotics Bay. Fighting for his chance to get the wildcard C, to get the third place in the group. Right now, I, I, I feel like, uh, I, I don't mean to cut you off here, but he is fighting really hard for that, that spot, and with the Robotics Bay this is actually really smart because he knows that with this Observer, the medevacs are late, so he can rely on getting not only the Colossae out, but Double Forge. He just took down, what happens in this case is you either have that 4 Marine Barracks Marine pressure continued, or you have a fast medevac pressure. Since not only did he see the Marines, but he killed them really well with that last fight, now he can do everything at once, which is what you want to do as a pros player in this case, get the Forges and the Robotic Swarping. Third base is coming up for him, and even though Byung is a little bit faster with his plus one, plus one, if Grubby hits those Chrono boosts then he can definitely get not only even in upgrades but also ahead and with how this entire group worked Grubby is definitely a player that is not happy with what happened today he is already 0-3 in the group and he is himself the biggest critic he wants to make sure that he gets out of this group with at least winning one or two games and that's what he's trying here is fighting for the third spot fighting for pride trying to get everything that Wolf just mentioned gearing up with gates getting this third base droning it up probing it up we have him now with plus one, plus one, also on the production tab. And he has a good shot here. He's definitely in a position where he can be the one that puts on the aggression later. Look how well he hit his chrono boosts on his forges. He's already basically passed Bjorn. Not missing a beat with those. Now he's out of energy because he's been hitting them so well. Getting the Colossus out. That will actually be his first Colossus and potentially his last. With the timing of the Twilight Council here, he could actually go into those Grubby Storms we've talked about. But he's getting range now, so it looks like he's going to Yeah, he just goes for the range upgrade. He decides to not go straight into Storm, which is something that we have, of course, seen quite a lot. And uh, quite a few Terran players were fooled by this. The Observer coverage for Grubby is also really good. He has three on the map, and he knows exactly what's going on. He got a bit unlucky in the early game that he missed those Marines walking in. But now he makes sure that he knows about every single movement of Byung and sees immediately immediately that the Terran player is using this huge bio force to put some aggression on the Protoss player. Yeah, I think Grubby should have easily enough to hold this though. It's like Colossus with range coming out soon, he's got 1-1. One, one. He's got the additional gateways going down to really hold this. If Grubby, with all these extra gateways going down, if Grubby kills this bio force, he can go for a really awesome counterattack at the third base of Byung. He has two Colossi now, and the range upgrade is not done just yet. But look at what Young does. He, got, he goes into a Ghost Academy and starts Vikings 2. It's basically an all-catch build that he's going for. And uh, Grubby is a bit more specific about the composition that he uses. He has not started a Temple Archive just yet, but he misses a bit the opportunity to deal with these units. Yeah. There is a gap in the force field. Now the second Colossus comes into play, and he kills a lot, but on the low ground the Marines are still doing damage. This is great against the Zealot Heavy Force to attack the way that Byung hits this angle, but Grubby still has so many units he needs to save that Colossus, and he will. Both of them low on hit points. Ah. Oh, actually, he loses one. He loses the second as well. Grubby messing up the micro at the last second. It started out great, but now Byung has a pretty good trade there. That was two Colossi down. He's got a second wave of units coming across the map. Yeah, the trade was decent for him. It was really good. Byung with a high ground vision, thanks to the Medivacs, was able to take down both of them. Grubby tried to retreat with the Colossi. Now he has one on the map. Plus two attack has also been started. Byung is hitting his upgrades as well and is going straight into the first attack upgrade for the Vikings so that he can deal with those Colossi a bit faster. Young taking a supply lead here, and Grubby needs to be careful now, chasing the factory away, but one of those stalkers gets a bit too over-eager. Yeah, Observer escapes, which is pretty important for Grubby, so now you can see the angle of attack, because on this particular map, that choke point that's in between the third and the natural is never where you want to be as Grubby, and Grubby, some of his zealots got caught over there, that's exactly why Byung took that angle. 
showing he really knows this map. He has a lot of experience playing against Pros players here. And he continues the attack. Grubby still has several Colossi, and if he can buy a little bit more time, he will have 2-2. This is really important because 2-2, as long as he can get his Zealots out there and down there, if he fights on top of the ramp, 2-2 won't matter, but fighting on the low ground would be Forcing a cancel here. The army supply for both of them is still very much the same. And we had now a great cancel. Those two zealots definitely paid off. Grubby just trying to get now his additional tech. He wants to get Storm. He wants to get the Templar Archive. And on three bases, he has the gas to afford it. Also, the third armor upgrade has been started, whereas he's still waiting for plus two attack to complete. So the next base for Byung is, of course, going to be really important. But Grubby is also going into a fourth base. And we have both of them at the same harvest account. Grubby just needs to have, there it is, Storm on the tap. He wants to have area effect damage. Still utilizing the pile into the bottom right. Uh, he's got a wall to deal with this time, but he expected another command to rebuild. In this case, it was not. These Zealots do not have charge. The base is being made at the fourth. The fourth is being made again for Bjorn this time in a safer location. The Zealots can't reach, but they don't have charge. This is actually, a, I think, a uh, mistake. He definitely had the resources to get it, and this is going to hurt him. You guys are going to see when this battle occurs, how sad Grubby's zealots are going to be. And I think you may realize it now. He loses so many resources here as well. All the resources he lost on those zealots actually make up for, uh, just, it costs the same as that next he just made. So that's resource after resource. That those four zealots are going to be the resource of the next he probably won't be able to keep. Charge has been started now, plus three armor and attack are on the tap for Grubby. Byung just starting now the first, the, the last attack upgrade. Storm is going to be ready. It should be ready. It, it's actually going to be really close. Yeah. There are ghosts in the unit mix for Byung, but if Grubby can delay the attack of his opponent for just a bit, then he will have the next uh, area of effect yeah. weapon. And there it is. Good EMP is low. Wow. And now he's trapped on the ramp. If no Zealot charge, there's no way he can hold this next. There are too many units already in the low ground, and he has the arc now. Oh! Nice, gets an AMP off, but still energy for another stop. Robbie at 191 supply. Byung on 200, and the bank for the Terran player is really good. Right. Robbie will have the better upgrades. Yeah, exactly. Right now, Grubby is about to have charge, and the, those 2-2 two, two upgrades are going to become 3-3 three, three upgrades. He now has the armor upgrade, and if he can actually get out down that ramp, the floodgates are open, and Grubby is going to stream to the... We've got the storm ready here. Great storm on those Vikings. The Colossus goes down. The Vikings immediately redirect, and this is a terrible position for Grubby to engage. The Zealots cannot do anything. He doesn't have storms ready here with storm. This would be a different battle. Trapped on the low ground, Young would suffer so much damage. Assault but on now the he has enough, and he has such a great army. He's going up the ramp right now. Grubby is in full retreat. He has a lot of minerals and also gas, but he can't warp in. He's in cooldown, and now he's starting to lose gates. Yeah, he's probably going to lose this game as well, considering even though he did economic damage at Young's base at the third with that drop, which is still, by the way, not cleaned up. Grubby is going to lose his natural here. He's losing so many pylons. A lot of gateways were made here as well, so he loses production. And he doesn't have anything that can, can put it back in this game. Look at the production tab. Well, you guys can't see it, but when it pops up on screen in just a second, you'll see that, that Grubby just does not have the resources to make as much as, as Byung. And, well, actually, that's not true. He has the resources, but he doesn't have the warp -ins. Yeah, he doesn't have the gateways anymore. At first, he had a problem with the cooldown, and then all the gateways were gone. He didn't have enough production anymore, and now he's paying the price. He's using the storms as best as he can, this trying to make for. a last stand, and he does a lot of damage, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. He's down to 80 supply against 160. Bjorn is now doubling the supply of Grubby and he is going for the kill. Yep. No, Grubby is quote, how's the weather today? Today it's, it looks like it's raining on his parade. So many probes going down here. He's down to 60 supply and Bjorn's units that stream across the map are going right for the third base. Those were great storms, they really were, but he doesn't have enough energy on these Templar. One, two, they finally 75 in the last second, but it's not going to be enough to turn this game around. He just doesn't have the production. Look at all his resources. He can't spend his money because Gates died. Yeah, he has the money. He doesn't have the production. His biggest problems, whereas Byung is hitting his production really well. One cycle after another. He's on four bases yeah. against one mining. And there it is. The G. G. Grubby is in code A. Byung takes the foreigner with him. The only win that Byung was able to get today, it is against Grubby. Both of them are now in Kodei. No chance of getting third place anymore. Yep, this is... 
This is a rough day for Grubby, but again, it's a test, and this is not what he's here for. He's here to actually improve as a gamer. He loves the game. That's something he said time and time again. He really enjoys playing StarCraft, and he's here to learn and improve his play. And he tested himself today. This is one benchmark, but the next one will be Code A, where he will have a lot more time to prepare. We and might see he him. looked good today, you know, even though he lost, he actually played well. He played against really tough opponents. It was a very tough group. We said that from the beginning against players like DRG, against Symbol. First is playing really well today, and he also got very unlucky in a lot of these games. The game against Lucira coming to mind where he took a risk. Lucira doing the same, but getting the better end of it. So. Grubby is now definitely in code A. He did not win a map today. He is currently at 0-4. He might have to play another match later. We're not quite sure yet. It depends on how the rest of the games go. And the uh, same is not true for Byung. He was able to get at least one win so far. But we are having a short break before we go into the last set of matches for the day. He had the up and down group C.